Welcome to wisnotes.com mathematics video tutorials. We're looking at the solution for question 9a, which reads given that f of x equals 2x plus 1 minus 2x squared. First, we have to express f of x in the form k plus a into x plus h squared, where a, b, and c are constants. Then we have to determine the value of x for which f of x is maximum. Then we have to state the maximum value of f of x and hence sketch the graph of f of x. Now, f of x is a quadratic function. And how we know it's a quadratic function is that the highest power or the highest order of the variable term which is x is a square is an x squared in this function hence it's a quadratic function and since we've been asked to write it in this form this is a perfect square hence we are being asked to complete the square now to complete the square we are there are several methods of completing the square what we're going to look at here is a method where we utilize the coefficient of the x squared, the x, and the constant term. So let's look at the standard quadratic function, the standard form for a quadratic function. Now, in this standard form, the coefficient of the x squared is a, the coefficient of the x is b, and the constant term is c. This is a standard form for a quadratic function. And upon completing the square, what we are going to find is that f of x is going to be equal to a into x minus xt r squared plus yt. So the change really is the xt and the yt. Now the xt and the yt can be expressed in terms of a, b, and c. Right? This will be the form and the xt and the yt can be expressed in terms of a, b, and c. Right, and those forms, the xt and the yt, are going to be xt is going to be equal to negative b divided by 2a, where the negative the b is the coefficient of the x and the a is the coefficient of the x squared, and yt is going to be 4ac minus b squared divided by 4a again a. B and C are the coefficient of the x squared, the B and the constant term C respectively. Alright, so if you go ahead and look at now this function here applying this principle or this theory, what we have is f of x which is which was given 2x plus 1 minus 3x squared so if we put it in the standard form by putting a negative 3x squared in front here we have to carry the negative sign never leave the sign behind so it becomes negative 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 so we'll put it in the standard form here what we have our constants our constants a b and c are going to be a equals negative 3, b equals 2, c equals 1. See, a, the coefficient of x squared, is negative 3. b, which is the coefficient of x, is going to be 2, and a constant term is going to be 1. So if you apply this xt formula and the yt formula, let's look at, let's look at the xt formula first. xt is going to be negative b divided by 2a. So it's going to be negative 2, which is b, b is 2, negative 2, divided by 2 times a, a is negative 3. So it's divided by 2 times negative 3. This negative cancels this negative, so we know our result is going to be positive. And then 2 divided by 2 is 1, so the result is 1 third. So xt is 1 third. And our yt, our yt is going to be 4ac minus b squared divided by 4a. So that's 4 times a, which is negative 3, times c, which is 1, minus, that's the minus here, b squared. So that's 2 squared because b is 2, divided by 4a. 
a is negative 3 so that's our negative 3 and this expression will reduce or this fraction will reduce to negative 16 over negative 12 negative will divide out the negative cancel the negative and if you divide numerator and denominator by 4 we will end up with 4 divided by 3 so that's our yt and our function therefore becomes f of x equals a from here a which is negative 3 into x which is this x minus that's the minus here xt xt is one third so one one third goes here then our square outside the bracket that's the square outside the bracket plus yt plus yt yt is 4 over 3 so yt is here but we are we were asked to write it in this form with the constant in front so we just need to move this 4 4 over 3 to the front and it therefore is equal to 4 over 3 minus 3 into x minus a third or square so it's really the same same expression here just that we put a constant term in front so that it resembles this one and if we want to give the values for a, k a and h we observe this one and compare it with this one what we find is that our a is negative 3 because our plus a here is equal to negative 3 here so plus a equals negative 3 so a equals 3 and then our plus h is equal to minus a third so our h then becomes negative a third and then the k in front is our 4 over 3 here in front so k equals 4 over 3 and that's our answer all right we have written our function in this form and given the values k a and h all right so that's the answer for the first part now the second part says we have to determine the value of f of x for which f of x determine the value of x for which f of x is maximum now f of x is going to be maximum right when x is equal to xt because when x is equal to xt xt is one third you'll find that a third minus a third this will become zero right and this f of x is will have its highest value when this expression here has its lowest value so that is when the x here is equal to the xt value here right so the maximum value occurs when x is equal to xt right and that is why we like to do it this way because we work out our xt value from the beginning right so the maximum value of f of x occurs when x equals xt and xt is one third and our maximum value is going to be the yt value that we worked out right the yt value is going to be the maximum value of f of x right so we can go ahead and put that in the maximum value of f of x is yt which is 4 over 3 that's the answer for this and this all right and now we are required to sketch the graph now to sketch the graph we need certain critical information we do need to know where the graph uh, cuts the y-axis and where it cuts the x-axis and we need to know where the, the, the location of the maximum point we also need to know the shape of the graph so let's look at that all right so for the graph let's go ahead and move these and put them down here put these answers down here so we take like a small space for the graph right so for the graph first need to identify the maximum point on the graph now we know the graph has a maximum because the a 
in the function is negative. Once A is negative, the quadratic function has a maximum turning point. And once the A is positive, it will have a minimum turning point. In this case, the A is negative, so we have a maximum point on the graph. Right, and xt the t means turning point, yt the t means turning point. So xt, yt are the coordinates of the turning point, and in this case, is a maximum turning point. So the maximum point will be one third four over three. That's xt, yt one third for xt four over three for yt. So that will be the coordinates of the maximum point, and then now the y-axis intercept y-axis intercept where the graph got the y-axis it's got the y-axis where x is equal to zero so if x is equal to zero then this is going to be zero and this is going to be zero and then our function is going to be equal to one and that corresponds to our c value see one is our c value so the max the y-axis intercept is always at the point zero c so in this case it is zero one because c is one so that is where the graph will cut the y-axis and then where will the graph cut the x-axis the graph cuts the x-axis where f of x is zero where y is equal to zero on the x-axis y is equal to zero and therefore that is where our function becomes equal to zero so we can write our quadratic equation so the graph cut the the graph cuts the x-axis where our function is equal to zero. So this is our quadratic equation. So we need to solve this quadratic equation to find the x values where the graph cut the x-axis. Those x values are called the roots of our quadratic equation. So we need, need, need now to just solve this equation and find those x values. So to solve that equation, we can first simplify it by making the x squared term positive. So let's simply multiply this first one by a negative one. So the negative x, 3x squared becomes positive 3x. The positive 2x becomes negative 2x. The positive one becomes negative one and the zero remains zero because negative one multiplied by zero is still zero. And then if we go ahead and factorize this, quadratic expression we're not going to go through the process of factorizing now but if we factorize that expression what we are going to get is 3x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 1 equals 0 so this would be the, these would be the factors of this quadratic expression and then if this multiplied by this is equal to 0 then either this equals 0 or this equals zero and therefore the result is going to be x equals negative one third or x equals one so negative one third and and one would be the points on the x-axis where the this graph the graph of for this function called the x-axis right so now we are going to look at that. Okay, so we need to just do a sketch. So a sketch, so it doesn't have to be very accurate. So we know we're going to bring in our axes first. Let's bring in our axes for our sketch. And what we say is that the curve will have a maximum shape so it will be over it will go over like that. that's a front shape graph and it cuts the x-axis at negative a third and one so let's say negative a third is around here and one is around here so we can go ahead and bring in the curve to shape something like that so we are saying that this point here is negative a third and this point here is one so we can bring in those values and put them here. Right, so let's line that up. So that's negative a third and one. Those are the rules for the quadratic equation where the graph cuts the x-axis, those two points. Then we can go ahead and put in the maximum coordinates of the maximum point right here. 
maximum point that's a turning point where the graph turns right where it turns that's a maximum point and the coordinates of that point here will be one third four by three that x t y t so we can go ahead and put in on the x-axis the point that corresponds to that so that's somewhere around here all right so that would be a third corresponding to that the x value here and the y value would be around here all right corresponding to the y value here where the maximum point is and then the graph cut the graph cuts the y-axis at one so we can go ahead and label that as well all right let's bring that in so that's it the graph cuts the y-axis at one so this is our sketch and you must label your graph so, if you label our graph, and our graph is f of x equals 2x plus 1 minus 3x squared. So that's our sketch, and that's our solution for question 9a.